in chapter 11, verse 41. Now, this is at Lazarus' tomb. And it says, then they took away the stone from the place. This is verse 41. Took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father. So now we know he's praying, what we would call praying. But notice he was talking to God. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I knew that you hear me always. Well, what does that mean? That means that God, he knew that God heard him even when he wasn't praying. Even when he was saying. Do you get that? But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. Right now. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Now, get this. If you're praying, you're having faith in God. Why? Because he's the one that has to provide the answer. Okay. Now, New Age says that you can have the faith of God, which means you can actually have that same kind of faith Okay, this is my Bible. You can have the Bible of Curry. Don't anybody come get this. Okay, it's my Bible. But you can have the Bible of Curry without Curry. Is that right? Okay. Now, but now, get this. We have faith in God. And our faith in God is that he will keep his word and provide for us what he said he would do if our faith is in him. Amen? But the minute we say, oh, but I have the faith of God, now I can have faith without God. Why? Because we got the same kind of faith, so I don't need him. See, it all goes back to what your faith is in. Our faith is not in our faith. Why? Because your faith, Jesus said, will fail. Isn't that right? He said, your faith can fail. So we don't want faith in our faith. We want faith in God. And now here's the thing. Now get this. If your faith is in God, Nick, understand, because God is faithful, that even if your faith fails, he's still faithful. Why? That means that if you can believe that he can do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think, even if you don't have faith for the thing, you can still get the thing because you have faith in him. Amen. See, faith is not currency. Do you get that? This is so important because this is the distinction between New Age and Christianity, or I could even say humanism, because the minute you start talking about, now get this, you having faith in your faith, now it's humanism, and you believe that the faith can bring the thing to pass. But you have to, as a Christian, we have to have faith in God that he can bring it to pass. Why? Because without him, we can do nothing. Does that make sense? All right, now, let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Yep, Mark eleven twenty two. 22. And Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, okay, who's a whosoever? I am. That's all of us, isn't that right? So he's talking to us, okay, whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain. What does that mean? That means whatever the problem is, you've got to say to it. You got that? Yep. You're talking to the problem. Right? We had a situation this week. It was <laughs> this week? Yes, this week. Um, people come out to our house, and when they were there, when they started to leave, their car wouldn't start. And so I was busy getting things done, getting ready, you know, all this stuff. And so um, they had to leave it there. And they said, they talked to my wife. And my wife said, yeah, we'll get somebody to tow it or whatever we got to do. Yeah. So the next day, uh, I was having to move some things around and get some things done. And so finally I went out there, and we were about to leave the house. And so I just went out there, and we had the key. So I, you know, turned the key, and it 
nothing happened. I mean, I mean, it didn't even, you know how sometimes it'll click, 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 like it wouldn't even do that. Nothing, nothing, right? And so I just did it and sat there a second. And I'm like, car, I command you, work. Boom, things started right up, right? Now, now listen. Then I went and called them and I said, come get your car, all right? <laughs> and so, because we were about to leave, and so I wanted to come get it. Now, when I said that, I spoke to the problem. I didn't pray. I didn't say, Father, please start this car. Why? He would have had to wait for me to turn something. If it had started without that, we'd have still had a problem, right? So you have to realize I had to say to the problem what I wanted it to do. Amen? Now, here's another thing. I did not say, car, in the name of Jesus, I command you to start. I said, car, I command you to work. Amen? Now, listen, I'm not saying don't use the name of Jesus. I'm saying don't use the name of Jesus like some magic charm. Right? What I was doing, see, the Bible says do all things in the name of Jesus. So what I was doing was in the name of Jesus. But I didn't have to say in the name of Jesus. And I didn't talk to God about it. I spoke to the mountain, to the problem. Amen? Amen. Now, but now get this. If my words are normally death, destruction, failure, sickness, whatever, guess what? My words to command that car to work would have been useless. Why? Because... Sweet water and bitter water should not come out of the same fountain. Amen? Amen? You say, well, I don't know, Craig. You know, you talk pretty rough sometimes with people like that. No, no, no. You have to understand why and, and the intention. If I speak rough to somebody, it is to get their attention on, on, on a point. Right? It's never to hurt or to do any of that kind of stuff. You know, why? Because my goal is to get them to grow up. Yeah. Right? And sometimes that takes kind of a slap in the face to get people's attention, right? Because they've been, you know, lullab- lullabied to sleep in, in most churches. So 